Hello again. <clears throat> this video once again is sponsored by Autodesk and I wanted to show in this one uh, what locations are. I have touched on it in earlier videos but I want to try and do it really clearly. Uh, so again going back to you know how this works basically there's an array there's a list of points on this surface and um, you know the, each point has a point position it has a normal and any other value that you might assign for example if you uh, if you use a paint vertex color tool and then you paint let me just make it black a second um, flood that then I'll paint some red on it like that so I'm now painting you know each point basically has a value here you can sort of see it interpolating between the points so these values here would be you know nothing you know there'd be these would be zero and then these ones here would be one on the red channel there's R G B and A so there's four channels but I've only painted the R so that's something that I can bring in, bring to Bifrost you know say there's 300 I can't remember there's something like 386 points here there will also be three another corresponding list with 386 values of you know of color over the RGBA map. So if I start a graph here and um, I get this sphere, you know, and I just plug that like that, move that BIF object over a bit. If I look on here, click on here and do a watch at a watch point um, you can see color set one 382 elements here that corresponds with the 382 you know points positions and all of that sort of stuff so point positions are 382 three point normal vertex that's different <clears throat> um, and you know face vertex is you know don't worry about that we're just worrying about the points at the moment so there's a list each of those lists correspond you know they're they're all in the same order in other words you know say for example that's point number one it will be one on the list in point normal list it'll be one on the list in the point position list it'll be one on the list in the color set one and so on um, and so because of that because they you know they, they always appear in the same place on each list <clears throat> Uh, you know, which is kind of like their index. All of these have an index, which does never changes on this object. Because of that, it's easy to drive the point normal with the color map. Because you know, you just go, okay, well, let's let's do it. Let's get that so that push deformer is basically a you know a normal. Um, it just pushes it out on the normal, and um, let's go set point position. I'm kind of running through stuff that I've already done, but I just want to make it clear because the locations thing is super important. Um, and I want to, I'll get to that in a minute. I'm not talking about locations at the moment, by the way. So, okay, so let's also get the color map value. To do that, we get, get geo property. There isn't a specific get color map node because, you know, it would be weird to have one for absolutely everything. So it, this is like a generic, you can look up whatever you want that's on the object. We know that it exists because I just looked at it on that watch point here again. So color set one is called. And this tool is a general kind of like look up any property that's on the object. And so in property, we go over here and we type in color set one. And the type, we have to tell it the type. So we go um, value types and it's a math float um, four. It's an array as well <clears throat> because you know we know that it's an array because it's a list there's tons of them it's not just one value there's a whole load of values and so that data we can now use well we can't do it into the multiplier and the reason we can't is because each bit of data coming out here has four values R, G, B and A so we need to split that into so which is a vector four and you know because there's four values then we need to split it into their component parts and r is the first one even though it says x doesn't matter it's just four values and you know 
then we're using that to drive that. So that's great, but what happens if we wanted to drive it with something else which hasn't got the same amount of points? You know, we need to find a way of making it so that each point on here has its own amount, you know, has its own value. So to do that, this is things called locations. So let's just, um, well, now I'll leave that there for the moment. But let me make another mesh on here. So we go, let's get a, a plane, move that over there, rotate it up a bit. I'll just make it a bit bigger and stuff. So, and I'll put a color map on that one. So where is it? Okay. And then I'll flood it with black, first of all. And then paint some red on there. So let's paint a sort of C shape. Hang on. Oops, hang on. Oh, I don't want that. Uh, undo, that's what I meant to do. Okay, the C doesn't mean anything, I just want it's just a shape. Um, that hopefully we'll be able to recognize in a minute. So if we wanted to make this ball um, affected by the points here and that's you know that that color map on there, what we'd have to do obviously there's no correspondence between the points because this this has a completely different amount of points to this. but what we can do is use stuff like the closest location to that one um, and use that instead or we can raycast from the positions of here outwards and look at the, you know, the closest, um, I'm not the closest, the, the, you know, like each little ray where it hits. But let's for the moment just do get closest location. And each point on here will, well, let, let me just get it up first of all. Get closest locations. Uh, we're getting it on the plane. Let's move that there. Uh, we want to get it on the plane. We want to look from the positions of this sphere. So this object here, we want to get all the positions here and each one wants to look at a, a value of something here and then return it. Then we'll have a list of 386 again, because the you know which correspond correctly because all of these 386 points on here will be looking individually at there. So Okay, so we get point position. Okay, so, you know, again, we've got as many point positions here as there are on this color set there. So that's why that worked when we did that push there. But also now, out of the other end of this one, the closest location, we're going to get that 386 locations. And a location is basically like, um, it will say, I found it on this polygon and I found it, you know, a certain sort of weighting between these points, you know, that, that specifies exactly where it is on the surface. So say you got it there and we looked up the color map, that color map on the R is going to be one there, it's going to be zero there, but you can see here it sort of interpolates the values because color maps are on, on the vertices, on the points, and it will interpolate across the polygon, you know, um, the values. So let's try and hook hook that up. So we've got that, get closest, closest locations. Then we have another node, which is sampling what, so that generally just tells us, you know, okay, it's on that polygon there. And, you know, so each one of these will be firing and finding a location. Then we need to go, okay, what do we want to find at that location? And the node for that is sample property. Then we're saying what value we want to find at that location. So again, the the geometry is the plane which we're looking at. That's the list of locations. And now we type in what value it is that we want. And it's color set one. And we tell it the default is the um, math float four because it's you know it's like here it was a. Um, Let's copy that one and stick that, that node there because we want to split that into RGB and A. And then I'm going to see why that's gone 
orange and not working. Let's have a quick look and see. See what I've done wrong. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm looking from the point positions, sampling the location. The default is let's have a look, maybe it's that value types is uh, okay I didn't want to put location uh, sorry array I just want to get out of it math float for I yeah this is the sort of thing where I do get slightly confused um, sometimes uh, and I think it's because for each individual point it's just finding a single um, you know it's not finding an array of values it's just finding a single value I think that's what it means um, but anyway, so the R value now on here we can use to push the the um, the mesh. If I plug this Biff thing back in, it will appear. Okay, and you can see now that the it's kind of difficult to see, but but it's reacting now to that C thing here. Probably be easier if I make this a bit larger. So it's let's have C is a bit more of it. okay. So you can see that C shape there. It's also there in the way that that's you know. Let me move this around. And you'll kind of hopefully that's kind of clear. Now the reason why that's looking ghosty like that is because with the normals are still drawn as if this wasn't. Um, you know this 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 wasn't hadn't been uh, deformed to make sure the normals look how they're meant to oops you need to um uh update them update point normals update is it mesh normals yeah terminology on you know sometimes I forget exactly what it is but now it looks kind of that's a bit more how you expect it to be so that C shape is you know it's going all the way through the object of course because every point is literally looking at where it is on this surface of here and it's picking up that C value um, but because every single point is doing it we nice have a nice sort of convenient list now that we can, you know, that we can use to drive the points on this on this object. And that's what locations are. They are, you know, as I'm doing this, I'm sort of thinking, okay, sounds a bit confusing, but um, I'm not going to say, but it's not. <laughs> uh, but it does get less confusing if you play around with it. Um, yeah. Anyway, hopefully that's that's useful to anybody who's kind of. Um, I thought I'd better do one sort of more of a reference just on locations themselves because they are so sort of integral to this. You know, when you're dealing with geometry and finding values sort of on on something else. Um, let me just see how much longer I've got on this. Uh, Thirteen. Oh no, I'll leave that one there. Um, yeah, I've got more to say about locations, but I'll I'll do that in a different video. All right, thank you. Bye bye.